everyone, Lawrence here with a new mountain bike review and in front of me right here is the Mondrecker Crusher R. As you can obviously see from the massive down tube, this is an e-bike and it's powered by Shimano Steps E8000 system, which I won't fully review, but just keep in mind it's one of the more intuitive, one of the more natural feeling drive trains out there, but it's not the most powerful and with a 504 watt hour battery, it doesn't have quite the range of something like the new specialized Levo that has 700 watt hours. As you can see, full on carbon fiber bike. So both the front triangle and the rear triangle, both are carbon fiber. The only thing that isn't carbon fiber are the rocker link up here and the little link below as well, because this bike, like most, if not all Mondrecker bikes, use their zero suspension platform, which means the rear triangle is a solid triangle, rocker activated but the bottom of the shock is also on a little link the small bump sensitivity quite good especially because of these really big tires uh, more about those later uh, it ramps up quite a lot and actually i haven't been able to bottom out the suspension despite just using the standard pressures and damping settings that mondrecker very easily provides on their website so you just look at your weight uh, and then it gives you the settings and you don't really have to mess around with it anymore. It's super handy. Now, before I go into more detail about the feel of the bike, I want to talk about component choice because I feel like it's a bit of a mix match. You know, it's a bit of everything. So it's Shimano powered, which means you have a Shimano shifter and you also get Shimano brakes. So these are 200 millimeter rotors, front and rear, four pots, front and rear, but non-branded stuff. So it's not XT or XTR or Saint or anything, but they're really good brakes for, you know, what they cost. However, Mondrecker then mixes that with a SRAM NX Eagle drivetrain. So you have Shimano and SRAM combined. It's a bit, it's a bit weird at first when you look at it, but you get used to it quite quickly. Um, I just kind of wish it was a DI2 bike all, all the way through because then you would have the same shifters on both sides, but it's fine. It's just a bit weird. What I really like are the components on the bike though. So NX Eagle gives you a lot of range. It's a bit clunkier than GX and like the really high-end Eagle drive trains, but it works and that's the most important part. And you just get that 500% range. You can just climb up literally everything, especially with, you know, 600 watts of peak power extra. If you can't really push it anymore, chances are you'll just fall over backwards with this bike. So drive train is really good. Now this, like e-bikes should be, it's a plus bike. So 2.8 inch tires front and rear both maxis tires so in the front you get a dhf in the rear you get a high roller just really good tires on um, both sides haven't punctured them um, they are tubeless compatible so you can just buy the bike take the inner tubes out put sealant in and that will be that but i ran it with tubes because i was too lazy now obviously these really beefy tires need something to mount to um, so Mondrecker chose for the X1900 DT Swiss rims. These are 35 millimeters wide internally. So they're pretty wide rims. They give the tire a lot of support. It's just, you know, it's what I would put on a bike to be honest. Really good choice of componentry. Shock wise, in the rear you get 150 millimeters of travel courtesy of a Fox DPX2 float shock. So you get rebound adjustment and compression adjustment. Um, so you can almost completely lock it out when you have to climb. Again, it's an e-bike, don't bother. Um, it doesn't really matter anyway, but you can if you really want to. Uh, in the front, there's a Fox 36 rhythm e-bike specific version, as you can see over here. Um, and it's 170 millimeters of travel. So quite a lot of travel on this bike, uh, which you need. Now with e-bikes, there's always the whole thing with unsprung weight to sprung weight ratios. Obviously with e-bikes, it's always really good because you have all that 10 kilograms extra in here. So the suspension feels super smooth. It's almost unfair to compare it to normal bikes because of that ratio of sprung to unsprung weight. Um, what I can say is that the bike out of the box, in my experience at least, is really progressive. So it's quite subtle and smooth and comfortable on like the small stuff, but I have not been able to b completely max it out yet, um, which is probably due to a lack of riding skill, but also due to a really good suspension platform on this bike. Overall riding it was 
one of the more fun bikes that I've ever ridden. Now, I will complain about a tiny little thing, but first let's go into geometry numbers. Now, my personal bike, the Canyon Spectral uh, CF 8.0, is a size extra large. This one is a size large. So, um, top tube length, 658 millimeters, which is pretty long, um, which gives you quite a long reach as well of 486 millimeters from here to about, you know, here-ish. Quite long, it's actually one millimeter longer than what I have on my size XL bike. So it's really long, which means the bike is super stable. Overall, the riding experience. Going uphill with an e-bike is always pretty similar. As long as you keep your legs moving, the motor will take care of everything. Uh, and when it gets really steep, you just have to move your weight around and, you know, maybe use your legs as well. The sending then is where a bike like this really shines because the suspension just feels better than a normal mountain bike. I tried this one at some local bike parks, also at Hirschenwald, um, where I had a blast and this bike was faster than my Spectral going down the black downhill course. So it's really good, really stable. Something that I noticed is on um, tighter turns, because the bike is quite long, quite slack, I was struggling a little bit, but it's probably due to me uh, because other people are shredding these bikes. Anyway, I said I was going to complain about a few things, so let's just get it out of the way. The first thing, and perhaps the most annoying thing of all, is that Mondrecker uses a carbon fiber down tube protector. So that's effectively a plastic down tube protector, which means that every single time, just the tiniest little rock or stone chip just touches this down tube protector it sounds like you just destroyed your frame it's horrible when you go on a, a bike tour for example and other people hear it who aren't used to this bike they're like oh crap that dude just broke his bike i had a friend on here um, friend without any sort of mechanical sympathy whatsoever tiny stone touches it she was like oh crap what's happening is the bike broken um it's nothing and the bike can easily take it but it's just pretty loud and it's super annoying a slightly less annoying thing is the rocker link here at the back. I don't know why it has to be so wide and my forward foot on really steep descents um, always gets in trouble. So my, uh, in my case my right calf muscle touches the top of the rear triangle when it gets really steep to the point where I even bruise my leg from constantly bashing it into the frame. Some people may not find this a problem. If you have smaller feet, your leg will be for forward more. Um, it's probably something I could fix with riding style and stuff, but I guess it was just worth mentioning. And then a third minor complaint is just the battery size. Moldrecker uses Shimano steps. It's 504 watt hours. Specialized has 700. Overall then, conclusion on this bike. What do I think of it? And honestly, it's a very simple conclusion to get to absolutely love this bike. You can go bike parking with it, with or without a shuttle or lift. Right now in winter time, there are no real shuttle services available. So that's where an e-bike like this really shines. But what's really good is because it has all that travel and that motor, you can also just take it on cross-country rides uh, with your buddies who are more into cross-country stuff or just less gnarly terrain. However, an e-bike really shines when it gets really steep so you can easily and quickly make elevation and then send it down the hill again. Uh, but for now, massive thanks for watching. Massive thanks to Bike2B for loaning me this bike. I really enjoyed it. I'm super sorry for crashing it on day one, but that's the way it is, I guess, with testing bicycles. Please forgive me. Uh, but yeah, massive thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.